This is video 55 on MicroPython and LVGL using a standard ESP32 USB board. In this video, we do a fresh look at building LVGL displays on ESP32 S3. Please let us know in the comments if you like this example, or let us know if you have suggestions to improve it. For this effort, we mounted an ESP32 S3 Dev Kit C 1 USB board on a base and an inexpensive 320 by 240 resolution integrated display on a breadboard. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like, as that really helps. Our goal for this effort is to set up a simple LVGL example on an ESP32 S3. We will demonstrate our slider and button examples, discuss the various ESP32 USB boards, discuss the display and the wiring, discuss the GitHub files, and walk through the code. The program files are at the GitHub site that is mentioned in the description and endnotes for this video. Let's look at two examples. First our test button display program. We display a button near the center and press it. As we do, a message is displayed in the shell of the development software. Let's stop the program and reset it to load the test slider display program. This program displays a slider in a label widget. Touching the screen along the slider space will grow the slider. and change the value posted in the label. We use these two programs to verify any new display. Running them first demonstrates that the display is wired correctly. Touching the button verifies the touch driver senses a touch. Since the button is centered in the display, any touch close to the center should action the event callback. Running the slider verifies if X direction is reversed. If the slider only responds in the vertical direction, then the XY values in the touch driver need to be swapped. Okay, let's move on. The firmware includes MicroPython and LVGO. LVGO is short for Light and Versatile Graphics Library. Best of all, both MicroPython and LVGO are free and open source software. The display we are using is the ILI9341 display. The display has an integrated touchscreen and an SD card adapter on its back. The display usually includes the mail header for the display and touchscreen. You can use the picture to help you locate the part at your retailer. We mention the part in our endnotes. Please note that the pins have display pin names. The ILI9341 display is popular and so it is available in multiple sizes. However, they are all 240 by 320 pixel resolution. Most touchscreen drivers assume the display is the 2.4 inch type running in portrait mode. We modified the driver to handle all three types. Since we default to the 2.4 inch type, you can easily adjust the setting in the display driver file. Here is a page from the da data sheet for the ESP32 S3 DevKit C-1 USB board. There are various ESP32 S3 USB boards with the same specifications and pinouts but have different names. There are also ESP32 variants which are different, so you must study and consider a potential board carefully. Here are some USB boards which have different names or ports and will operate fine with our firmware. Here is a diagram of the ESP32 S3 DevKit C-1 USB board. Once we identified the hardware SPI pins, we chose the other pins on the same side in case you mounted the device on a breadboard. This slide is showing our wired connections to the display. 
For example, the ESP32's hardware SPI clock pin 12 is wired to the display's SEK pin. We then used a jumper wire on the breadboard to also connect it to the display's T underscore CLK pin. The header names on the display that begin as T underscore are wiring the touchscreen component. The GitHub is the location of our deployable files organized by videos. The description and endnotes provide the GitHub's link. For this video, look for the video 55 directory. Under it are three folders, firmware, flash, and desktop. A closer look at the GitHub site shows the files we want are in the firmware directory under May 2025. Here are three subfolders. We want the firmware bin in the name directory ending with S3 Oct Legacy. Before we load the firmware, let's discuss the driver files. The diagram shows how the LVGL program in the white box interacts with the various MicroPython modules. In the data box are files containing modules often called drivers that reside in the virtual flash drive. The first file there, the display driver.py file, shown in yellow, may need to be edited to reflect the setting. You can look at the other driver files, shown in green and blue, but usually they are fine as is. Of course, other MicroPython code files and drivers can also be stored on Flash. Meanwhile, the modules in the red data box are the modules in the firmware. They usually are C code that are compiled as part of building the firmware. Any of these modules in Flash and firmware can be imported into your program. Because we are using a development tool like Thony, we can run our program from our desktop. Later, we could copy the program to the Flash where it becomes just another importable module. In deployment, we first load the firmware and driver files to the ESP32 USB board. We only need to do this once. To help us do that, we use the development tool called Tony. To deploy the firmware, we use a hidden feature in the bottom right corner of Tony. Connect the USB board to your desktop. Do this by connecting the cable to the rightmost port labeled USB. Click the right-hand corner and locate the ESP32 by its COM port. Now, at the bottom of the dialog box that appears, choose Configure Interpreter. This will take a few minutes. Once completed, the board will reset. Now, we'll, let's review the code. We'll look at the display driver first. This is the display driver. You can see that we've got the various imports for LVGL, then we bring in machine so that we can get the SPI communications. We initialize LVGL and we set up the SPI port. So we can define now the display object. So we're going to use the ILI9341 driver. We're going to pass it the SPI port and various control pins and finally, we'd set the rotation equal to landscape mode. If we had a different sized ILI9341 display, such as the 2.8 or 3.2 inch screen, we set up a, another call. Here you can do, you can uncomment line 45 and set model to big, which will compensate for the different size screens to uh, handle the touchscreen correctly. Next, we create the display driver and get the active screen. Now we're ready to do the touchscreen. Since we're not in ST7796, we do this line right here where we're setting up the touchscreen driver and we're using its chip select of pin 5. Finally, we have several statements that we talked about earlier to compensate for the different size screens. Here's the callback for the touch screen for reading the values. Here's the XY coordinates. 
And in here you, is where we modify the XY values depending on what position the screen is in. And finally, we have the indev for the touch screen. And that's it. All right, let's move on to the first LVGL program, which was the button to display. Here we've imported the LVGL library. We have machine with the reset feature. Here's the display driver that we just looked at. And we initialize LVGL. We pick up that default screen object and define SCR as the name of that parent object. Then we set up a few statements to put a border around the screen. We define a button style. Then we define the button. Here we're using that parent object SCR above. We've got the size of the button and we've put it in the very center of the screen. And here we've added the style to the button definition. Finally, label is a child widget of button and that you can see that because its parent is not SCR, its parent is button. We set the text of the label, we center it within the button, and we color the text so that we can and, and set the size of the of the font of the um, of the label so that we can read it easily on our display. We then define a callback routine for the button, and here's where we configure that event action. So we give it the name of the callback routine, that's this, and we tell it what event to watch for. So anytime someone clicks or presses on the display, we want to invoke this callback. And it's doing something simple. It's just counting from one to infinity and then displaying it on, the, on our shell. Let's go ahead and give it a, a, a run. Okay, let's click on the button. And you can see when I clicked on it, the message appears in the shell. Let's move on to the next example. And we'll look at the test slider program. The slider program has Similar import statements as the button. It's going to import LVGL, machine, and the display driver. It's going to set up the current screen in the object SCR. And we put a, a blue border around the edges of the screen. Next, we define a slider one object and we center it in the middle of the screen. We create a label. Notice it's using the parent SCR. It doesn't use the slider because it's an independent object on the screen. And so we then align it to the top of the screen in the middle, a little slightly down a little bit, and set its color and size. Now we set the progress, and we set the text of the label to progress zero. We define a callback, slider callback. And now we define the slider one event action. We're going to use this slider callback. And then we're going to update uh, and we're going to invoke this callback routine whenever a value changes, which would occur whenever we touch the screen. Let's start the program and run the program. All right, let's touch the screen. And you can see it responds immediately. If, if it only responds when we move in this direction, then that means the X, Y are swapped. Or if we touch here, it goes full length. Uh, and we touch here, and it goes minimal. Then you know the X is reversed. And that's it. In summary, in this video, we introduced the ESP32 and the display hardware components.
We discussed the wiring between the ESP32 device and the display. We briefly discussed the LVGL program and modules, and we reviewed the code. The benefit is simple and flexible code that does not require a time-consuming compile and flash sequence. In a MicroPython environment, we can run and interact with the code. We can adjust the user interface by changing a statement and re-entering it in the shell. Please comment if you feel other changes are needed. I hope this video helps your LVGL MicroPython coding. Thank you for listening.